Well, hello to all of you, brothers and sisters. Um, here I am once again and having some messages from the Lord that I wanted to share to all of you. Of course, I want to clarify first of all that I don't claim myself as a prophet or anything like it. But I consider myself as just one of God's lowly servant. Okay, I hope I made it clear to all of you. So now, before I will start sharing about the messages from the Lord He gave me through my dreams, I want to start it off with a prayer. Father God, thank you so much for your trust and this great privilege that you have given me. Thank you so much, Lord, for the many graces and everything that you have done for me and to all my loved ones. Father God, I, as I'm going to share this dream here in YouTube, I would like to ask for your enlightenment for all the people all throughout the world, especially to those people who are holding very important or high-ranking positions in any government offices, in all communities, municipalities, cities, all throughout the world. I pray as well for more enlightenment for those people who are holding important positions in every private company's businesses. Thus, they can think and act as good models to the people under their supervision or governance. I pray that they will become a godly person every day. Lord, I pray also for more enlightenment and guidance in the minds of those religious leaders, preachers, priests, and everyone who leads some communities of believers so they too can function as your good ministers for those members they are having. Teach them, Lord, your ways so they can also give good leadership and honest-to-goodness leadership to your believers. Lastly, I humbly ask from you, Lord, to open the eyes and ears of the spirit of the persons who don't acknowledge you at all, so they too can get the chance to repent from their sins. I pray that they, they can grasp fully the great importance of your messages for them and to heed your last chance given to all peoples. All this I ask in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so now I wanted to, get, to dive into these uh, four messages from the Lord. I got these dreams in different days. The first message I got was last April 20, 2021, this year. By the way, it took me a long time to decide to write it down and to go ahead and share these messages since at first I was thinking that these messages are basically for myself. But when the third message came, I understood that these messages are not only for me. And also when I started composing and write them down on a piece of paper, there came many stumbling blocks, many incidents that will pull me away from writing them. Okay, so continue. So to continue, so I wake woke up at la, at dawn last April twenty, since I wanted to go to the toilet. So after there, and have realized that it's still so early, so I went back to sleep. Right then, a kind of dream happened at once, but I don't remember all of the details of those dream, but only that part where I saw hands, and I don't know who was the owner of those hands. But the hands were so familiar to me. So the left hand holds the 20 crowns, coins. And put it on the right hand and showed it to me. Then I woke up with that in my, in my mind. As I was pondering about it, I was puzzled. And since it's already early morning, so I started praying as what I usually do each morning. I was asking God's enlightenment about that coin dream. That morning, I, I have not got any answer yet, so I just go ahead and do my daily routinary works in the house. But since in, I'm so eager to learn about its meaning, so I decided to search about it through internet and have found the meaning of a coin and a number 20 on it, which has a biblical meaning. So it means provision and also that number 20 symbolized the completeness. It is not widely used, but it is com connected to a perfect period of waiting, labor, or suffering that is compared to trial and rewarded. 
In the Bible, Jacob waited for 20 years to get his wives and property and to release from his father-in-law. While in another account, King Solomon was building house for himself and it totaled for 20 years until he got a place to live. So that dream is associated with trial or period of waiting. And if successfully completed, the reward is generous and full of God's love. And I believe this was God's message to all of us, that if we just persevere in all trials, surely we will be rewarded. We know that God, He is so generous, God. Okay, so in my next dream, it happened last April 23. I woke up from a dream that was so exciting. I don't remember all uh, of the details of that dream, but the only thing I can remember was that part where I saw a sentence in the big letters as if a kind of headline on a newspaper or a signage on the street which says, Ready for rupture. At once, when I opened my eyes, I became so happy. Then I wonder what it time it was. So then I look at the clock and it was 6.30 in the morning. I tried to remember more about that dream, but it's only that part I can remember. As I think about it more, I became so overjoyed with those words I can't anymore go back to sleep. So awesome dream indeed. Suddenly, I remember that two days prior that day, my spirit was prompted to read the last verses of the Bible, and so I obeyed and opened my Bible and read that last page. As I started reading the last verses of the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 22, so at once uh, my eyes was directed to these verses 12 up to 14, and it says, And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that uh, do his commandments, and that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. And so after I read, all of these page passages from the Revelation book, suddenly everything became so clear to me. What that coin talked about and that bold letters in my dream with a very lovely voice ready for rapture. The last verses of the book of Revelation talks about uh, Jesus' second coming, his judgments or reward. But before Jesus will finally come, he will snatch or rapture first his brides. His church for his second coming will become a punishment for those who don't observe his commandments and for those who don't acknowledge him as Lord. That day is a dreadful day for those rebellious and evil ones. Anyway, so to continue, after that so awesome words I saw in my dream, that morning I decided to join in our uh, Bible sharing group using Facebook Messenger online. We call it Bible Sharing Group since in this fellowship meeting, we are in a way sharing each other the words of the Lord and our meditations about the verses of some uh, certain books uh, that uh, we are to uh, read. Then we will share to the group some testimonies of God's goodness we receive. So it's kind of Bible study and as well as sharing each other's experiences and as well as singing praises to God. So as I join our group meeting, usually our group leader, after giving her meditations about the chosen verses for the day, uh, will already start praying uh, over for all of us in the group. And oftentimes, she would say or utter some foreign words that we can't understand. But there's no one, but I mean, there's one of us who understand, uh, could understand those foreign languages our group leader will utter. Uh, so this kind of uh, gift, we call that gift of tongues. Anyway, so as she started praying in tongues, she mentioned Rosh Hashanah. At once, upon hearing those two words, I became so affected, for I understood the meaning of it. Our leader continued with praying for us, but I became so emotional already. Rosh Hashanah, by the way, means in the Jewish religion, the head of the year is their Jewish New Year. 
but in the Bible, it is known as the Feast of Trumpets. This blowing of horns marked a serious time to prepare for the Day of Atonement. This is also why this time was called the Ten uh, Days of Repentance. So the Feast of Trumpets also pointed toward certain aspects of Sir Christ's work. In the Old Testament, in the book of Joel 2, 1, it says, it says, blow a trumpet, uh, a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near. And in the New Testament, in Revelation 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 to 2, it says, When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven. For about half an hour then I saw the seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets were given to them these verses from the Bible talks about blowing of trumpets where to uh, to signal the coming events to happen when Jesus returned and the final days of our generation so Jesus in the book of Revelation uh, was having another name or symbolism like lamb in the Bible but the moment he will return he will be like the mightiest lion of Judah so going back to what I mentioned about Rosh Hashanah after I heard it mentioned by our group leader then I understood at once that it was the confirmation I was waited from the Lord in connection to that dream about ready for rapture now my brothers and sisters I believe with all my heart that I it won't take long that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for our sins and was resurrected, uh, resurrected from the dead and is now seated in the right hand of God the Father, is coming back soon. Now, I would like to talk about my final dream, last May 7. I was having a very pleasant dream. In that dream, I was engaged in a conversation with a fine man. I have a very good feelings about him, but I can't remember how he looked like and who he was. In that dream, the sun was shining so brightly. There was something that he said, but I can't remember everything of it. He mentioned name. I mean, he mentioned uh, the book of Nahum, chapter 5, 10. And that's all I can remember. So I, as I searched about these verses, there was no such chapter 5 and verse 10. So I think I made a mistake uh, when I uh, listened to what, I, what he was saying to me. So, but what transpired to me is Nahum 1 verses 5 to 10. And it says, The mountains quake before him and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nidvi. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. Whatever the plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. They will be entangled among thorns and drunk from their wine. They will be consumed like dry stubble. So plain to understand that these scriptures from the book of Nahum talks about Jesus Christ's second coming as well. And it's another confirmation from the Lord. So, and it's gonna be a dreadful day for everyone who will be left behind. Those who continue to do wickedness, for those who have studied, or on all for those who have studied about uh, the book of Jonah. So, we know that Jonah was sent to the city called Nineveh to inform them about the incoming wrath from the Lord to the residents of that town. Since they have done much evil in the sight of our God, and even... Uh, have made some idols for themselves but the focal point of this story was that they repented and have changed so God with all his mercy did not continue with his plan to destroy the city 
and they were all spared from the wrath of God. And I believe, as I have meditated on the scriptures, that these passages I receive are for those who have repented already but has backslid from the faith and have continued doing some wickedness. Now, brothers and sisters, you have heard it, that Jesus soon will, will return and uh, not take so long anymore. I guess uh, many of you have already heard many times already about this rapture thing and the second coming of the Lord Jesus. If you wanted to be saved and shall receive that uh, everlasting life and be together with King Jesus and be together with all the saints and his holy angels in the kingdom of God in heaven, this is the day that you must seek him. Jesus loves every one of us. He died on the cross for all of us so that we can be saved from our sinfulness, from our rebellious ways. I tell you that heaven will be so happy to welcome everyone regardless of what race you belong, what status uh, you have. His love for everyone knows no bound. He can forgive all your sins as long as you are so remorseful for all of them and would accept him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is the only true Son of God, the only mediator between us and God the Father. There is no other way. He is the way. The Father in heaven, to the Father in heaven, I, I mean, He is truth, the giver of life eternal. In Deuteronomy 30, 19, says, Today I have given you the choice between life and death between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Well, I guess I have already said all that I wanted to say here. I'm hoping that today will be a starting point for every one of you guys who have backslid to the faith or for those who don't know the Lord Jesus yet, uh, this is the day that you must uh, seek for him because it's really to, uh, it's good to take it to the heart, these messages you have heard this time. Be reconciled with the only Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Savior for all human race. To my fellow believers of Christ Jesus, may the Lord empower you all with all that what you need spiritually. Spread out the gospel of repentance to those people you know who have gone astray. So there can be souls be saved. Many souls will be saved. Let's help our Lord Jesus with his plan to save as much souls as possible. Let us be his faithful servants. And whatever will happen next, hold on with your trust and faith in the Lord. Amen. Lord, may, all, may God bless you all. Amen.